Tonight's show, Inca Do, originally aired October 10th, 1952. Please enjoy the show. Around Dodge City and the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Fancy vest he's always ordering. He never said one word about it. Well, you know that little poppin' Jay. He's flighty. Probably happened sudden. Yeah, uh, too sudden, Doc. Even for Herman. Say, come to think of it, I haven't seen him all morning. And he's usually strutting up and down Front Street, preening himself like a powder pigeon. Yeah. Oh, he's probably upstairs there, sleeping in, getting ready for the opening tonight. We, we gonna be there, Mr. Dillon? Uh, maybe. Mr. Dillon? Oh, <laughs> yeah, Chester. Uh, we're going to be here. Oh, see, Matt, Matt, I was talking to the bartender, and I asked him 
what she looks like? And he said if he told me, I wouldn't believe it. Well, the fellow I'd like to talk to is Herman Bleeker. Yeah, well, nobody's seen hide nor hair of him. You know, man, I'm beginning to wonder, too. Howdy, strangers! <laughs> Welcome to the Longhorn. I'm Mamie, the new owner. Uh, Mamie? My gracious sakes alive! Oh, <laughs> 190 pounds if she weighs an ounce. Oh, the bartender was right. I wouldn't have believed it. Boys, looks like we're gonna be doing business together, so let's get things straight right in the beginning. Now, in the first place, the minute you stick your foot inside that door, you're on my stomping ground. I'm the boss of this shebang, and don't you ever forget it. When I tell anybody to hop, he hops. Is that clear? <laughs> you what, I aim to give the squares a deal in town. All the liquor here is going to be aged over 30 days, and the dancing girls aged under 30 years. <laughs> mm -hmm. The liquor's straight and the girls are graceful. There's only four aces in every deck, and the cards only read from the front side. That old woman talks too much. Hey, you get a fair shake for your money, but there ain't going to be no fame dangling. Dangle, and dangle, another thing, mister! I'm talking! What's so much, you old badlands? <laughs> Excuse me, boys. <clears throat> oh, looks like it started, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, uh, I'll just wait a second. He paid for his drink? Yes, ma'am. All right, you wall eyed old maverick, cut on! Whoa! <laughs> you see that, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, she laid him out flat. Now, as I was saying, boys, I just won't stand for no fame dangling. Now, maybe some of you figured I was wearing this six-shooter for a decoration. Well, now, just cast your eyes on the ace of spades. I got tacked up on the back wall. Now! Whoa! Whoa! For the land's sakes, did you see that draw, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, and she got the card, too. <laughs> the boys won't give her no trouble, Matt. Mm. All right, boys. First one's on the house, and it's the last free one you'll get. The only credit I give is for funeral expenses. <laughs> Belly up, boys! <laughs> well, sir, Mr. Dillon? Chester, uh, I want to talk to Herman Bleeker more than ever. Hey, Doc, you know she's, uh, man, you know she's big enough to, uh, well, you know, I, I bet she forced her to sell. Yeah, maybe, Doc. I'll be right back. Uh, I, I want to talk to her. Ah, uh... <laughs> oh, that shooting was nothing, boys. Oh, you're the marshal, huh? Oh, yeah, that's right, ma'am. Uh, my name's Dylan. Well, proud to shake your hand, Mr. Dylan. Oh, thank you. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, uh, thank you, Miss Mamie. <laughs> Welcome to Dodge City. Mighty decent for you to express the sentiment, Marshal. I reckon you won't get much business around the Longhorn. I'll take care of any trouble that's around here. Oh, I think that, that would be quite a change. Uh, boys used to push old Herman Bleeker around every now and again. Oh, that runty little prairie dog? Well, I, uh, I didn't know he was planning to sell, Miss Mimi. Uh, must have made up his mind in a hurry. Yeah, I made him an offer and... He took it, just like that. Uh, he found himself some new living quarters, I suppose. Oh, yeah. He moved right out last night. Oh, yeah, well, I, uh, I wonder where he's holed up. Huh? Yeah, well, there's a couple things I, I'd like to see him about. Well, now, uh, I tell you, I'm afraid he left town, Mr. Dillon. I think he said something about taking the Santa Fe to St. Louis. Now that I remember. Oh, I, I see. Uh, I see. Well, that, that's too bad. Uh, I'd sure like to have seen him. Uh. Well, sure. Uh, I'll probably drop in now and then, Miss Mamie. Anytime, Marshal. For you, it's on the house. <laughs> well, uh, thank you, ma'am. Well, what'd you find out, Mr. Dillon? Let's get out of here, Chester. Are you coming, Doc? Oh, yeah, sure. With both ears a flapping. <laughs> Well, boys, what do you think of 
Oh my gracious, Mr. Dillon. I sure would hate to meet her in the dark. Well, she's got a voice like a buffalo. Ain't it awful? It just itches your ears, don't it? Why, well, the woman's a human monstrosity. Yeah, and I still haven't seen Herman. See ya. What did she say, Matt? Well, she says that she thinks he left town, Chester. Uh, I want you to check all the rooming houses and the hotels along Front Street, Mr. Chester. I, I'm going to go over to the railroad station and the stage lines, and uh, I'll meet you over at the jail. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Well, say, Matt, I, I think Herman keeps a horse over at Delivery Stables. Yeah, I, I thought of that too, Doc. Uh, I wonder, would you be good enough to look into that for me? Oh, why, sure, be happy to. You know, Mr. Dillon, she is an awful straight shot. Yeah, Chester, I know. still over at the stable. He didn't tell them anything about leaving. Yeah, he didn't leave, Doc. Uh, Mammy came in on the nine o'clock train last night. Uh, only one train out after that, around midnight. He wasn't on it. And he didn't buy a ticket on the stage, either. All right, now you see? What did I tell you, Matt? That settles it. Yeah, of course, he may have moved into one of them hotels. No, sir, Mr. Dillon. I'm afraid he did. Uh, well, what'd you find out, Chester? That nobody in this town has seen Herman Bleak since around 9 o'clock last night. Oh, Matt, I knew I'd get me a fee out of this one way or the other. Well, uh, uh, don't spend it yet, Doc. Don't spend it yet. <coughs> <coughs> what? Uh, buenas noches, senores. Oh, Manuel, uh, come on in. Uh, gracias, senor Dillon. Well, uh, what's on your mind? Well, senor, I was at the railroad depot. When I hear you ask about the little one, er, uh, Senor Bleeker? Oh, yeah. Well, and the other, the Senora? Oh, there is much woman in that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there's no argument there, Manuel. <laughs> well, uh, Senor, last night I have seen something which is very strange. Oh, what was it? Well, I have come home very late, one hour, Two hours before dawn, but I was visit a friend. You understand. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. You see, I am walk home in much hurry, and it is really dark, senor. When at once I see this lantern in the arroyo behind the Longhorn Cantina. Oh, a lantern, you say? I am think, well, what is this? So I wait, and this lantern is come toward me. And when it is close, oh, this woman, oh, I have no see one like her. Oh, what a scare. Well, uh, what was she doing in the Arroyo? I, I do not know. Oh, but there's one thing I forget. She has carried something in her hand. Well, uh, what was it, Manuel? It was a shovel, senor. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Uh, I found something here, if I can just, uh, if I can just get it loose. Well, that's okay, Mr. Dillon. Can you see what it is? Yeah, 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 it's fine, Chester. Ah, uh, yeah, I got it. All right. Uh, well, that's a boot. And here's the other one. Oh, yeah, all that fancy stitching. Matt, those are his. I've seen them on him. Yeah, so have I, Doc. Yesterday, in fact. Uh, here, take them, Chester. Yes, sir. There's a bundle of some kind here. Oh, you found the body, huh? No, no, it, it's clothes, I think, Doc. Uh, oh. let, let's let's have a look. Yeah. And that's all there is in here, too. The, the hole doesn't go any deeper. Uh, it's, uh, it's hard pan on the bottom here. And uh, Hold the lantern down, Chester, and, and let me... Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. All right, let me get this unwrapped. Well, I'm, I'm not so sure about that coat, Mr. Dillon. There's a lot of them like that around town. Yeah, I know. But take a look at this fancy vest. Oh, now that's Herman's. Nobody else in Dodge City would ever wear a thing like that. 
Well, from the looks of it, you won't be wearing it again. Second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, the escape car speeds from the scene of the crime and the victim notes its license number. Police investigating the case discover the car has an ironclad alibi. That just begins the excitement on tomorrow night's Gangbusters program. It's the case of the twice parked car, an authentic crime story taken from actual police records. Don't miss. Gangbusters, presented by CBS Radio tomorrow night over most of these same stations. Now, the second act of Gunsmoke. You and take you along with me. Sure can have my job, Mr. Oh, no, you don't. I will not lift a hand in anger against a woman, especially that woman. <laughs> I keep thinking we could still be wrong somehow. Oh, a real diehard, huh? Now, look, look. Now, suppose Herman hurt himself in some way. How? 
And, and he wanted to get away by himself and, and recuperate. Where? And suppose he didn't want anybody to know about it. Why? So he decided to stay with some friend. And, Who? And maybe he... Uh, Oh, come on, Chester. Let's go. Um, there she is at the end of the bar. What are you going to do, Mr. Dillon? Well, i got to take her in, Chester. Maybe she'll talk when she's arrested. I gotta get that gun away from her some way. It's not gonna be easy. Well, it's gotta be done. I, I, I've never drawn a gun on a woman yet, and I'm not starting now. If I could just manage to, uh, I don't know what. Well, there might be a chance. Uh, stick close to your chest. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Well, uh, I was just wondering how you were getting along, Miss Well, Man. like a kid with two tongues and an all-day sucker. <laughs> Say now, tell me, did you find that little weasel, Herman Bleeker? I, uh, well, uh, I, I thought you told me he left town. Oh, well, uh, I was just guessing, Mr. Dillon. You said something about planning to. Here, set it up and have a shot of poison. Oh, uh, no, uh, no, no, thank you, uh, thanks. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I came back here for a particular purpose. You see, uh, Chester and I have uh, have a little bet on. Mr. Dillon, do we... What we kind can't... of bet is it, Marshal? Well, it was about that shooting trick of yours, uh, hitting the center of that playing card, you know. Uh, see, Chester figures that it was a fluke of luck, and uh, he's betting me <laughs> that you can't do it five times in a row. Well, we'll soon settle that. The card's still up there. Stand aside, boys. Oh, yeah. Now, Mamie's gonna limber up her shooting iron, so get out of the way. Now, get down there, Curly. All right. There's one. And a couple of them. Well, they're doing fine so far. How we doing down there, boys? Uh, they're all dead center uh, so far, Miss Mamie. Yeah, Mamie. say, hey, you there. Whatever your name is, uh, what do you think of your bet now? <laughs> I guess I just kind of lost my head, Miss Mamie. Well, uh, three to go and, uh, or three down, two to go, let me see. Hmm. Well, one more. Oh, wait a second. No. Well, uh, what are you stopping for, Miss Mamie? Uh, well, I got some rules I play by. One of them's never to fire my last shot and leave my gun empty. Oh, uh... Well, I, I see. Uh, well, that's, that's a pretty good idea, I guess. Sorry to lose your bet for you, Marshal. I'm, I'm convinced. Well, that, I guess that did not uh, Well, Chester, Chester, uh, uh, Miss Mamie, uh, I guess you're not a gambler yourself, huh? Who says so? I'll take a fair bet at even odds any day of the week and twice in Philadelphia. Well, uh, in that case, uh, I'll make you one now. Uh, I've got a pretty fair gun here, or at least I thought so, till I saw yours in action. Uh, hmm. Well, I'd say yours is every bit as good as mine. Well then, uh, how about a bet? Uh, your gun against mine, on a one-cut high card. Well, now, I... Of uh, course, really... of course, it's all right with me if you'd rather back out on it. Who's backing out? You got yourself a bit, Mr. Dillon. Finnegan, shuffle us a deck. If it's a bet or a fight, Mamie never backs out. Now, who goes first, Mr. Dillon? Why, uh, ladies always. All right. If your friend Lester will cut him for us once. Uh, it's, it's Chester. Chester, be proud for Never mind. Cut the cards. Yes, sir. Ma'am. <laughs> Let's see what we got. Ah, well, uh, Jack of Spades. Uh, that's not bad. That's yeah. not bad. Plenty good, Marshal. Plenty good enough to beat anything you can. King of Diamonds. All right. I'm beat.
Fair and square, you won yourself a gun. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, here, Chester, uh, will, you, will you take it? Yes, sir. And now the handcuffs. Here? No! No, stop maybe, that! Maybe you're under arrest. What? Why, you, of all the side, wanted double-crossing hands, maybe, Andy? Maybe now you're going to stay fastened to me until I get you in a cell. So you might as well make the best of it. Why, you? And as far as that's concerned, you'll be safer in jail than out of it once word gets around. People here in Dodge City thought a lot of Herman Bleeker. That sawed-off little grandma! Now that's no excuse for killing him in cold blood. What? You heard him, Mamie. You killed me! Oh, Bleeker. This is the biggest night of my whole life to hear somebody finally shut Mimi up and make her like it. <laughs> the marshal's a gentleman. He knows how to talk to a lady. And to hear you say how much the town thinks of me, Mr. Dillon. What's this all about, Herman? Well, I'll tell, I'll you. tell you what it's all about. This little grub worm ran out on me in Cincinnati three years ago. Like to broke my heart. And I've been hunting him ever since. And last night, I found him and I wailed the living daylights out of him. Yeah, he, he looks like it. Uh, but why did you bury his clothes? Mr. Dillon, would you want to be married to a man that dressed like that? <laughs> well, she pretty near murdered me, Mr. Dillon. I've been up there in bed all day, just too bruised and embarrassed to howl downstairs. Oh, we had our ups and downs, Marshal. Me and Herman, you know how it is. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Chester, uh, g give me the keys to these handcuffs, will you? Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon, I got them uh, right, uh, wait, well, I guess, oh, I, I guess they're over in the, uh, what's the matter, Chester? <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Dillon, when we were digging out there, I guess I must have lost him. <laughs> Chester, can't you file that thing any faster? Might as well just relax, Mr. Dillon. Took half an hour to get that one off Miss Mamie's wrist. Oh, all right, all right. Just hurry, will you? I'm filing as fast as I can. Hey! What? What? Oh, uh, Doc. Mamie gave me this bottle of Irish here to make the waiting a little easier. And it's Jameson's. Oh, uh, well, fine, Doc, fine. Uh, uh, Chester, let, let that go for a minute, huh? All right. And open it up. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Can you imagine it, boys? Little Herman Bleeker married for years to a woman like that. Oh, I don't want to imagine. Oh, I'd get nightmares. Here you go, Mr. Dillon. Oh, uh, thank you, Chester. Uh, Doc, here you go. Thank you. Ah, uh, well, gentlemen, here's to the weaker sex. Say, Mr. Dillon, which one is that? <laughs>